Success in Life with Robert Tilton. today and do I have a word from heaven for you when I come on the air I don't want to come with just a word from man but I want to come with a word from God you know when you get a word from God it charges your battery do you realize that you have a battery inside of you <laughs> it's your heart out of your heart flows the issues of life the stuff that life is made out of flows out of your heart and the Word of God says that faith the faith of God the kind that removes mountains the kind that calls things which be not as though they were that kind of faith the God kind of faith where Jesus said if you don't doubt but believe the th with the faith of God he said if you don't doubt but believe the things you say shall come to pass you shall have whatsoever you saith. That is decreeing faith. Now, isn't that something? Now, we in the natural, we cannot do those things. I mean, we can do a lot with our mind. <laughs> Some of us can, but uh, I'm not exactly one of those. But, you know, we don't use our minds to the full capacity. We're limited as natural beings, but when we decide to begin to operate in the faith of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. You know, he that showeth mercy gets mercy. He that loves gets love. And those that use their faith, it creates the substance. It says, Hebrews, that, that faith gives substance or reality to the things hoped for. Okay? It also says that faith is the title deed. If you've got faith, you've got the title. You've got the title to that new home. You've got the title to that new car. You've got the, the receipt to that new wardrobe and furniture. You've got the receipt to that savings account. I mean, that's, that's what gets along. And then it says, then how do we get this faith? Now listen to me. If this faith of God can do all these things, then how in the world? Give, give me some of it. It says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, there, the, you know your Bible is just words. It's, it's called the Logos. But there is another word when you hear it, and it's God speaking to you. When you decide it's not just going to be ink on pages, when you decide that it's not just going to be history or Bible prophecy in the future, when you decide it is a word from God for you today, it's a rhema word, a living, it's alive. Jesus said, the words that I speak are spirit, and they are life. And you can, he, in the centurion that had the sick servant, he said, just send the word, and my servant will be healed. Just then, the Lord reminded me how that faith is like a servant. And the centurion had a sick servant. Sometimes people's faith is sick, and it needs a word of health. Roman, uh, Proverbs 4 says the word is health or medicine unto those that find them, and health or medicine, life unto those that find them, and health and medicine to your flesh. So I have, I said all of that so that I could say this, I have a word from God today. Deuteronomy 14 verses, the King James translation, Deuteronomy 14, get ready, because I'm going to shoot this word right to you through this television set. And those of you that got your antennas up, and those of you that have ears to hear, those of you got some spiritual ears on, are you out there? Those of you that say, yes, Bob, quit talking to me like that. Those of you that got some spiritual ears on today, get ready because I'm going to speak it. I'm going to say it. It's going to be rhema to you. It's going to get down into your battery. It's going to charge your battery. And all of a sudden, what has been impossible to you, what hasn't been happening that you want to see happen, 
and to stop some things that's been happening that you don't want to see happen to you. You're going to have the faith to remove mountains. You're going to have the faith to decree a thing, and it will be established unto thee. Are you ready? Deuteronomy 14, verses 24 and 25. It says, After God has blessed you, thou shalt turn it into money. God wants to bless the work of your hands and turn it into money. Are you ready to see some true testimonials of people who begin to use the faith of God? Their batteries got charged, and they found out they didn't have to be broke or poor or have uh, bills piled up as high as a mountain. Do you realize that God said that he wants to bless the work of your hands, and that can be turned into money? I'm going to show you some scriptures from the Bible, and you are going to hear true testimonials of people who found out. Deuteronomy 8.18, don't forget it's God who gives you the power, the anointing, the ability to create and to get wealth. Well, get ready, because you're going to hear the testimonials right now of people like you and I who found out all you need according to Jesus, is a little bit of faith like a seed, and it'll start growing, and it will produce a harvest of whatever you need in your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Watch this. James and Barbara wanted a piece of the American dream. James took real estate training, acquired houses to rent in his neighborhood, and soon had built up $300,000 worth of properties that should have earned $3,500 monthly income. My goal was to, to have enough property to give me enough income so I can quit my job and, and do this full time. The American dream. Right, the American dream. But to do that, James and Barbara had to borrow $20,000 against their own home mortgage. The cash was needed to help close one sale and to renovate and repair his properties so that he could rent them. Problems with slow-paying or non-paying tenants caused the dream to crumble. They were forced into bankruptcy and lost their rental properties in order to save their own home from foreclosure. The thing that actually forced me into bankruptcy is that I was unable to pay the mortgage. We were unable to pay it. We, we tried to pay it, but we were behind. You know, we... How far behind? Um, about six to nine months behind. And that already represented a, a figure of about how much? Um, $3,3600 okay. behind. James had suffered an on-the-job disability that left him out of his regular job as a state corrections officer with the prison system. His salary dwindled to $440 a month disability payments. Barbara, too, was out of work, having suffered a back injury at her job. Eventually, even her $56 a week disability payments ended. Now, bankrupt, fighting to make the mortgage on their own home. Things looked desperate. My main concern was saving my home. Um, if I didn't have the money to, to pay my mortgage, I just didn't pay it. I took care of the utilities, bought food for us, and that was about it. James finally felt he had to leave Buffalo to start a new real estate business in Birmingham, Alabama with his brother. He'd have to leave Barbara and his two boys in Buffalo until he could send for them. I was leaving about $30,000 in debtness. And this is after we had lost the, uh, the real estate property. There's still a matter of about $30,000 that we owed out. That was not cleared out that by bankruptcy? Not, that was not cleared out by bankruptcy. I felt alone, um, physically alone. I knew that James was with me, and I knew what he was going down there to do. But I was just here by myself, you know, left to face everything by myself. While James was trying to get established in Birmingham, Barbara in Buffalo discovered success in life at the innocent invitation of her then eight-year-old son, Davon. He told me that success in life is on. I was like, success in life? He's like, come see, come see. So I came down and um, I sat and I listened and he was talking about vowing. And I was like trying to figure out, what's a vow? <laughs> what's a vow? He said, you don't have to have it. You don't have to know where it's going to come from. Just believe that God will give you the seed to sow and the bread to eat. 
Barbara called in a vow and felt a new awareness of God calling to her and moving on her heart. She rededicated her life to the Lord. Soon James was back in Buffalo to move his family to Birmingham. Barbara told him about the vow she'd made for miracles with their finances. James's own faith had stirred with church attendance in Birmingham. James watched success in life and called in his own vow. Soon James prayed for salvation too and began to grow in his new relationship with Jesus. It was after they moved back to Birmingham that he received a certified letter from New York State. He was to learn when he contacted the Department of Corrections that he had been offered back his old job after four years away from it. When I got my first paycheck, I was, I was able to do something that I had never done before. Keep money to the next paycheck. <laughs> so, so after that, um, things, things was, was beginning to look up financially. So. I went and made another vow. James received an even more incredible blessing not long after he returned to Buffalo and started back at his old job. When I got back, I was working. I worked about six weeks, and I was on the job, and the lady called me up, and she, she informed me that uh, the state had underpaid me for five years, from 1983 to 1988, you know, and she said, she said, that's not all of it. She said, I got some more information for you. She said, and they owe you $17,334. I said, praise the Lord. And, and this reminded me of what the statement I had made before I left Birmingham when I, when I confessed that Satan had to give back everything that he had taken from me. Them people had almost four years to give me that money. And they, had, they didn't give it to me. They had no intention of giving it to me. And I know if I hadn't have been uh, 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 obedient that I would have never got it. James and Barbara have dedicated their home to Jesus, conducting Bible study and worship meetings. James is elated to be able to share Christ with hundreds of inmates on an informal basis as he helps guard them in prison. And God is helping them to establish a church in Buffalo in the minority neighborhood. And God's financial blessings thrill them continually. The main thing that I got from the Tilton ministry is that the teaching on, on making a vow and the teaching on giving and receiving. Uh, this is why I teach people, because in, in the city uh, that we are in, uh, the, the people that I'm teaching, they need to step out in faith the same way my wife and I stepped out in faith. They need to be taught uh, how to give and to receive. And if you, if you don't give, then you're not gonna receive. I know all of my blessings that I've gotten, you know, I know they came from God, and can't nobody tell me anything different. And he's the reason the scripture, um, Isaiah 119, it said, if you're willing and obedient, you eat the fruit of the land. With a testimony of spiritual and financial miracles from Buffalo, New York, I'm David Hunter. That was James and Barbara, and they learned to use the faith of God and turn that faith into a blessing and God began to bless the work of Kabahash. See, in Proverbs it says, if a thief be caught, he has to restore sevenfold. And I'm talking to some people today. I'll just be flat out straight with you. The devil has been stealing a bunch of your blessings and your finances. But we're catching that devil today, and we're going to give him a black eye. Hallelujah. You know, I'm so excited. God called me to preach to the greatest group of people in the world. I'm a seed sower. The sower sows the seed and it comes up and it produces a harvest for as the earth brings forth, uh, for as the rain comes down from heaven and waters the earth that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. What, is that? what are you saying, Bob? I get to take God's Word and sow it into the good soil of your heart. Some of you are good soil. Some of you are thorny soil. Some of you are hardened soil. Four kinds of soil in the Bible. There's the hardened soil that the Word just never makes entrance into a person's life. And then there's the soil that's shallow. It gets all excited at first, but then when persecution and problems come along because of that Word, they get discouraged and give up. And then some of it's just thorny. You know, it, it tries to grow, but it doesn't produce much because the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of trusting riches instead of trusting God choke it out. 
But then there's the good soil. It's sown in the heart, and it produces some 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. James and Barbara learned how to enter into a covenant with God when they had nothing. And, you know, another part of my blessed ministry is that I get to preach the gospel to people who, who have debt, that are broke, who are having a hard time receiving and making ends meet. Now, not everyone. I mean, hey, you can be a businessman with a million-dollar-a-month budget and uh, still might not be making ends meet. I get to preach to the people the gospel to people who are having areas of lack in their life and to show you and them, if you're one of those, how to produce a harvest in your life. This isn't, this isn't hype. This isn't Christian science. It's Christian sense. It's simply using God's Word in your life. Listen to this. Job 22, 21. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty. Thou shalt lift up thy face to God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he will hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your path. And then when men are cast down, are you cast down, discouraged, depressed? Then when men are cast down, they shall say, There is lifting up, and he shall save and deliver the humble person. Isn't that something? That when you're down, if you will acquaint now yourself with God, you will have plenty. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Listen to this. And this is, this is what I teach for, for those of you that are, that are kind of at, at, at the bottom right now. Bottom of your checkbook, bottom of, of uh, maybe even your faith. I don't know. But you're just kind of bottomed out. You, you can be bottomed out. You can reach a point. And, and you're not growing any longer. Things are not progressing. That's, that's a, it's a word for someone whose life is kind of bottomed out. It's not that you're on the street, but it's kind of like where you're at, you've been, you, you, you've been this is a person I'm saying, you've been in that, situ, that place for some time and things have not been progressing. Any healthy plant is going to grow. If it doesn't have something destroying it, if it's getting plenty of water, it's going to be growing and enlarging. Okay, I'm seeing a person, and just a moment ago I heard the Lord say, I put people in front of you today who need to start over, to begin again. The word I'm hearing is a new beginning for someone. In other words, you've gone through a lot, maybe bankruptcy, maybe uh, uh, it's just you, you feel like you've come to the end and you need a new beginning. You need a new beginning. And I'll tell you something, the beginning sometimes feels like the end, but it's not the end. It's still the beginning. James and Barbara, they saw how to start a new beginning by making a vow of faith. Jacob, when he had nothing. Genesis 26, when he had nothing, God opened his eyes to his abundance. And Jacob said, if you'll be my God, will keep me protected from my enemies, give me clothes to wear and food to, uh, <laughs> clothes to wear and food to eat, and will keep me in the way that I should go, then you shall be my God. And it says, and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, I will give you a portion or a tenth of whatever you bless me with. You can enter into a covenant with God by making a vow of faith. And I like the $1,000 vow of faith. $1,000 faith doesn't mean you have it, but what I'm doing, I'm challenging you to use your faith, okay? It's, it's, just, it's a spiritual commodity. Don't turn me off. Listen to me. Just keep listening a second. Your faith must be used. And God wants to bless the work of your hands. What do you do? Remember the woman in the Bible? The creditors were coming to take her sons away. And she cried, her husband was dead, and she cried out to Elijah. 
and she basically went, what am I going to do? And he asked her what she had, and she said she didn't have anything but a little bit of oil in her house, just a little bit. She didn't think she had anything, but she had a little bit. A little, are you getting this? A little bit. And Elijah said, go get some empty vessels and begin to pour. And when the vessels were filled, he says, go and take those vessels and sell the oil and take the money and pay your bills and live off the rest. Debt free, living off the overflow. Hello. Not running down the road on quarter empty, but living full tank, living off, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's Bible. Most people don't go to church anymore because they get fed up with religion. Religion doesn't have, sometimes the word religion is a good word, but most of the time religion is what killed Jesus or trying to, what killed Jesus, that religious spirit. But Christianity says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I, sh I decree, I shall not want. Well, Jacob made that vow to God. And that's what this couple did. They made a vow of $1,000, and as God provides the seed, that's all. He then will, multi 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and God who provides seed for the sower. You decide you're going to be a sower. You're not buying miracles. You're not buying anything from God. You're simply worshiping God and thanking Him for His blessings. There's a person watching me. You need to make a $1,000 vow of faith. And it's frankly speaking, and this is the word I've heard, and I don't think I've ever had this word, at least a long, as long as I can remember, which sometimes isn't very long, but I don't think I've had this word for some time. There's a person watching, and this is a vow for starting over. It's kind of like a clean slate. Now, you make the vow. You pay on it weekly or monthly or ever. As God provides the seed, just promise God you'll not eat your seed. And then what's going to happen? As you sow a portion of what God begins to bless you with, then he will give you bread to eat and raiment to put on. The sower, he provides seed for the sower and bread for eating. will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness. That's the vow of faith. There's a phone number on the screen that connects you with our prayer center. I want you to call me and make that vow of faith. I'll send you some instructions and envelopes and some envelopes and stuff. You can begin to pay on it, maybe weekly, monthly. It may take you a year or two years. I don't know. But you know what's going to happen? It's like you put in, mashing that gas pedal in your life it's putting, it puts fuel into the engine. You give God some faith to work with. Now, here's David. David has a testimonial of making the vow of faith. If you're still a skeptic, an unbeliever, watch this. As far as the eye can see, hundreds of acres of rich farmland. David was the third generation to work this land. Through the diligent examples of his grandfather and father, this man learned what it meant to be an American farmer. Lots of hard work. But when David expanded into dairy farming, hard work wasn't enough to carry the financial burden. My dad was not in agreement with that. I, I went against his wishes and I, I mortgaged his land to do it. You know, that's what it amounted to. The initial investment was a $60,000 barn. And of course, the cattle, some of which cost $6,000 a head. Although the new farming venture was successful for a couple of years, the operational cost and the poor farming economy would soon take their toll. That was kind of the end of good judgment with it because one thing led to another after that. Uh, oh, I borrowed more money to, to, to build um, expensive silos to store feed in. At that time, the, the interest rates were quite high, and the, but the, the prices at that time were good, but Shortly after that, why? The prices of both crops and the cattle that, we in, that I invested in um, dropped significantly. Cattle and crop prices dropped, 
but the interest rate at which the dairy business was financed remained high. This in turn created enormous debt. When we had that $685,000 worth of debt, we owed $400,000 more than what we could cover. If we sold everything and left here with nothing, we still would have owed $400,000 at that time. So, I mean, it was, that was bad times. David's wife, Terry, remembers the situation as critical. It was just like one day there was no more money from the farm for us to use in our living expenses. And that was when I realized there was a real problem here. If there could be nothing coming out of, off of that business anymore for, for us to live on. Because David's farm was mortgaged to finance their dairy operation, he lived with the risk of losing not only the land and his home, but his parents' home as well. I mean, it just took everything that we generated from the farm to pay that debt, and we were con drastically falling behind in pain. When David watched Success in Life, he was captivated by what Robert Tilton had to say. He knew the Spirit of God was speaking through him. I watched the program, and God told me to make a ball, a $1,000 ball. Yeah, I told God, I just don't have any money. I, you know, it's hard to understand that everything that I, I was generating income, but it, it, all, it was gone before I got it. But David took a step of faith. Even though the money wasn't there, he called the Success in Life Miracle Prayer Center and made a $1,000 vow to God. It's like, I knew to trust in God before, but now I was actually doing it, you know. Because, you know, the money was the thing to me that I needed so badly. And just the act of, when I, when I made the vow, then God was in control of the money. And it was like, once I did that, things just started to happen, I mean, immediately. The first miracle was the sale of some grain that had been stored in one of David's silos for more than eight years. During an initial test, David was told the grain had gone bad. But as this determined farmer wrote out his prayer request, he began to operate in faith for the situation to change. But all at once, we brought the next, we brought a sample in again after I sent the prayer request in because I, I asked God to heal the grain. Through, I had Brother Bob agree with me, you know, I sent it in with my vault payment, and we took the sample in, and it was good. Another miracle was a two-year surplus of feed for the cows. This amazing abundance of hay freed a good portion of David's land as rental property to other farmers, which provided money to pay their mortgage. In the past, see, we've had to use every bid we got from the milk income, because that was our source of income, you know, to pay our land mortgage and, and, you know, these big debts. Well then, but now I don't, you know, I can take all my milk income and clear up these bills. Today, David and Terry are well on their way to being debt free. Their bills have been reduced by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Since he's cast his burdens upon the Lord, David now has time with his family and he owes it all to making a vow to God. Before I could say in my, you know, I was saved and I could say in my head, well, you know, God's first in my life, but, you know, really in my actions, why my money was first. I, I was doing everything I could to get the money I needed, but all at once, I, you know, making the vow said that, you know, God's first. Reporting from Minnesota, I'm Ted Warren. That reminds me of that scripture in um, Psalms 76, and this is, let this be a rhema to you. Don't just hear it with your, so many times we, and I, I've done it too. We just hear the word is just something for somebody else, but it's not for somebody else. We're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and, and like what David said, he, he said he stepped out in faith. He stepped, he stepped out. And when he stepped out, he stepped into what God had for him. This scripture, when David said that, st that stuff that hadn't been selling and wasn't working, God rebuked the devourer. And that's Psalm 76, 11. Listen to this. Make a vow and pay it unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared 
and he shall cut off the spirit of the princes. Breaks that spirit of the principalities and powers. Make a vow. As God provides a seed, just don't eat your seed. So many people eat their seed. If you, if you eat your seed you have for today, but you don't have a harvest for tomorrow. Make a vow. As God will provide, God, either he's up there or he isn't. We're proving it. We're finding out if he's really there or not. I just had an incredible phone call just a few minutes ago. In fact, it was, I was on the air. And one of my uh, men took the call. Incredible phone call. Incredible testimonial of what the vow of faith can do. I'm not going to elaborate on it, but it's just incredible. Over a period of time, several years, what God has done, if you'll start working with him as your senior partner. David made that vow, and God rebuked the devourer and broke that spirit of the principalities and powers off of his farm. That's what happened. Now, just begin to pay, make a vow, and I like that millennium faith, that, that thousand dollar vow. Why do you like a thousand? Well, first of all, it definitely gets your attention. It makes you think. You know, if you just throw something in the offering bucket, you don't ever think about it. But I mean, when you start giving God your best, then you've got faith for God's best. <laughs> and you won't ever have it until then. David said when he made that vow, it just changed everything. It, it changes your outlook. It changes how you see things. And today, a strong word for someone who needs a new beginning, a new beginning, a starting over. Someone starting a business over, starting a life over. You're just starting over, a new beginning. Let the slate be clean today. And you just say like Jacob, God, I vowest a vow. That's what it said. When he had nothing. You know what God did? God gave him a vision. God gave him a dream and showed him how to multiply his flocks. I remember one time we were out of money when we first went into the ministry. I didn't know what to do, but we had given out of our need. We'd learned to do that. Years ago, I got the, one of the first books that Oral sent out, The Miracle of Seed Faith. I remember I, right after I got saved, I waited and waited for that book, and I read it, and I said, that's it. That's it. Giving out of your need. God is your source. Giving out of your need. And expect to receive. I don't know if you got three points or four, but I remember I got a hold of that and I started practicing it. And we were out of money. And I, we had sown our last bit of money. And that night, the Lord Jesus Christ, actually the next morning, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me audibly and told me what to do to get some money. Put peepholes in front doors. I went to Sears, charged myself about two dozen of those peepholes, bought me an electric drill and an extension card and a nail apron, and I started knocking on doors. And the more doors I knocked on, the more peepholes I installed. And I came back to our little travel trailer, what we lived in when we first started the ministry, and my pockets were full of that green stuff. And my wife said, where did you get all of that? She said, did you rob a service station? I said, no, I've been installing peepholes. <laughs> and you know what? It worked for some time. It'll still work today. God will give you ideas and a plan. Now, you need to pick up the phone right now, and I challenge the faith of God in you. I challenge you to do something that's beyond your natural mind, beyond your natural emotions. Just begin to pay the vow weekly, monthly, or ever how, as God provides, as God begins to give you some seed. Send a portion in on your vow, and then use the rest to pay your bills. And let's just... Let's just see what God will do. Don't make it a, a heavy, hard thing. Don't worry about it. Don't say it was a mistake. But what happens is, according to Ecclesiastes, the angels get out there, and they start, either they're out there or they're not. Either God's out there or he isn't. Either we can believe what he said or we can't. It, how long are you going to be halted between two opinions? Part of you, you're afraid that God's not going to be there, so you don't want to find out that he's not there. And part of you said, I want God, I want to find out if God's really out there. I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. Make a vow and pay it. And in the day, it says, offer unto God thanksgiving. 
That's what you're doing. You're thanking God in advance. And pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of your trouble. And God said, I will deliver thee, and you will glorify me. There's a phone number on the screen. I want you to go right now. Maybe your faith is $500 or $100. I don't know. But as long as it challenges you, and then just begin to pay on it. And you get into expectancy. You, it, it, expect, you expect to... It, it causes... I don't know how it works, but it causes you to expect. And you'll start noticing things. Well, I... Well, that's a sale loan. That knows new, look, there's a suit. Look at the price of that suit. Well, how come that suits that price? God's starting to multiply your seed. He's starting to bless you. We're going to go to another testimonial of Sonia. Incredible testimonial. But while this is airing, it's time to move. It's time to be a doer of the Word, not a hearer only. It's time to act in obedience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has spoken to five people right just then. I heard him say he has spoken to five people. You know who you are to make a $1,000 vow of faith. There's also a business person that God's speaking to to make a $1,000 a month out of your payroll account toward the hot soil of this ministry that is reaching out and is going to do a lot more in these last days than we've ever done before. You need to be obedient. It's not so much the $1,000. It's the blessing, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold that's going to come back into your life so God can increase the fruits of your righteousness and increase your seed for sowing. God put me in front of you. There's a person watching. It's a new beginning for you. There's a person watching. Your life is bottomed out, flattened out, and you need to stretch your faith a little more. There's also a person watching that you made a vow years ago and you didn't pay it, and you need to renew your vow today and get back into that rhythm of seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. In fact, now here's Sonia. Watch this. With so many gauges and dials, you might think you're looking at the cockpit of an airplane. But actually, it's the dashboard of an 18-wheeler, a view Sonia sees almost every day. Her fascination with the big rigs began as a child. And as she grew up, Sonia learned to drive these enormous transport vehicles for a living, a living that was not always reliable. If I was making the money that I should have made, it, would, it shouldn't have been any problem. But I may run good this week and have to sit part of next week. And I only, that only leaves me a week and a half to come up with truck payment, house payment, support. An unstable trucking schedule plus the cost of maintaining two rigs created a shortage of finances. Sonia and her driving partner ended up losing both trucks because they couldn't make the $2,400 monthly payment. If the running had been good, then I could have met all the expenses, the upkeep of the truck keeping my family going, myself going. But when the truck has to sit, when those wheels don't turn, my pocketbook doesn't need them. Sonia was determined to drive again, so she and her partner acquired two more trucks. But just as she was beginning to prosper, the accident happened. The fella coming from my right ran his red light, and it caused me to run head on into him. When I when I swerved to try to miss him, I hit my partner, which was right beside of me, and I just took the front end of his truck out and up under him. So we lost both trucks that day. With four broken ribs, a punctured gallbladder, and three jammed fingers, Sonia spent several months recuperating. Although the injuries were relatively minor, the hospital bills that had accumulated were something else. When you're on an operator, there's no medical insurance. There's no workman compensation. There's no unemployment. There is your job only. And with the day of the wreck, it took everything. Sonia had $10,000 worth of medical expenses. Within a year, she was back on the road. But again, she experienced the same problem as before, lack of finances. That is, until she learned God's biblical promises on success in life. Really, what I first said in the back of my mind, I said, well, I tried everything else, okay? 
So I continue to listen to what he's saying about making vows. And you know how Robert Tilden talks about making vows. I mean, he gets right down to it. Just straight out, tell you the ins and outs of it, right? So I got up and I called and I made a vow. And the lady that I spoke to, she said, well, what are you making this vow toward? I said, a job. I need a better paying job. Vowing brought Sonia into a new realm of expectancy. She began a 21-day prayer of agreement with Robert Tilton, believing God to meet her critical financial needs. Every time I thought about the vow, it made me know I'm going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. Sonia knew God had honored her faith when she received a job offer from a trucking company. In her seven years as a trucker, she is now making more money than ever before. And that was the job that I had been praying and vowing about. So I had an increase of 245 to 650 a week. A week. Sonia began to witness one miracle after another. Liens that had been taken out on her two homes were lifted, and hospital bills that were way overdue were surprisingly dismissed. So right now, financially, I feel comfortable about what I'm making now, but I know I'm going to do even better. Since vowing, Sonia has received an additional weekly pay raise. In fact, she is doing so well that she bought cars for her children. Nobody can tell me that God did not give me this job. You hear? You think that vowing helped release the power of God? In I life? know it did. It, 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 it's really what started me to, to re really realize and see just what Jesus Christ was capable of. With an incredible testimony of faith from North Carolina, I'm Ted Warren. Another success in life story through the power of Jesus Christ, my God, <laughs> will supply. Je Abraham had that revelation, Jehovah Jireh, my God will provide. Sonia got the revelation. David got the revelation. James and Barbara got the revelation. My God will supply all of your need, the seed and the need, according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. When you make a vow, you're focusing your faith on God as your source and your solution. It, it's amazing. You start looking to God. You start expecting God to move. You're, you're, and, 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 and it causes you to keep from missing the blessings. It's time for you now just to take God as your senior partner, as your source. When you call, you're saying, I'm taking God as my source. You say, well, he's already my source. Well, you do this, you'll find out you really weren't taking God as your source until you enter into a covenant with him as your supplier and as your source. And you start expecting, because there's enough scriptures to, 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 to beat any devil off of you on the vow. And you start expecting, is that the car God's about to give me? Is that the house? I, you know, I've been so, I vowed for that house. Is that the house? You start expecting. And then you'll hear that still small voice. God say, that's the one. That's that piece of property. God will will give you, a, there's a person, something about property this then. Then when men are cast down, then they will say there is lifting up and he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island or the land of the innocent. Mm -hmm. There's a person watching me. You need to make a vow of $1,000 for a new home. Just begin to pay on it. That seed is going to come up. There's also a business person watching me, and your business has flattened out. You need to take God as your senior partner, and you need to make a sizable vow. I don't know if it's 5,000 or 10, maybe seven for God's blessed number seven. I don't know. But I know there's a person watching me. You, need, you, you deal in higher numbers than a lot of us do. But you've got to get up there into those numbers and make it something that is believable that you've got faith for. We've got just a few moments before we go off the air. Several people are calling in and making vows, $100 a month, $1,500, $25. Whatever God's speaking to your heart that takes faith. Today's an exciting day. 
It's a day of new beginning. James and Barbara, I love their testimonial, how God began to deliver them. David, what God did for him and his farm, what God did for Sonia and her trucking business, and that's just the beginning of testimonials that are coming in night and day of people whose lives are being changed. People are saved through our broadcast, healed through the broadcast, and blessed and are prospering through the broadcast. Right now, let's pray. Father, I believe you have spoken to several people that you're endeavoring to break the powers of darkness off their finances and off their debt, off their home, off their health. God, I believe that you have put the vision of what you want this ministry to do in these last days. You burn it in my heart, God. World evangelism, the heathen for our inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for our possession. And God, I believe you're connecting divinely partners and as they bless this work, God, I believe you're going to bless them. For I'm touching you now, saith the Lord, and I'm dropping my word into your heart. For what I'm going to do for you in these last days, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, but I will begin to reveal it to you by my spirit. And just as I opened up Jacob's eyes and showed him how to prosper in his flocks, I will open up the eyes of your understanding and show you how to put your hand to the plow and to harvest. This is your hour and this is your day, saith God. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to their hearts, Lord, with the number, which is 1,000 or 500 or 5,000 or $250. A $25 what, a tithe to begin to tithe every month or every paycheck. God, right now, I believe you're speaking to hearts. Holy Spirit, move upon them. Deal with them. Jesus, they speak, there he is. As the Lord begins to speak to you, if you'll be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If you'll be willing, some are willing but never obedient. Some are obedient but not willing. If you'll be willing and obedient to do whatever God's, and say it. And we've got just a few moments before we go off the air. I want you to quickly now, while the Spirit of God's moving on you, help us in the ministry, and it's going to come back into your life. And I'm believing that God is going to provide seed for you to sow. There's a person watching me. You've been wanting to start a business. God's going to show you the right one. Make a vow and just begin to seed as God begins to bless and prosper you. There's a person watching you need to make a vow for a new home. Another one needs to make a vow for a new car. Some of you don't have finances, but God's going to begin to... I have to believe this. This, this is the way preachers are supposed to preach. In the, in the Old Testament, the better job the, 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 the priests did teaching the people how to operate in Deuteronomy 28, blessed in the city and blessed in every field of their work, the more tithes came in and the more the, the, the preacher and his ministry was blessed. Hello. I just don't pull punches. I want to evangelize the world and I want to get the millennium and the new Jerusalem down here and let's get on with the program. Let's get the harvest reaped. Let's get the souls into the kingdom of heaven. Let's buy some television stations. Let's buy some sa more satellites. Let's, let's get out there and put, build Bible schools and, and churches all over the place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And help people get their minds renewed and get them saved and get them healed and get them out of guilt and condemnation and get them into the kingdom of God and help them make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Let's do it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It's the power of God unto salvation for everyone that will believe it. Hallelujah. He healed everyone that believed. All that came to him, he healed them and delivered them. It's just the secret, the blessing, the work of your hands. Fred Johnson's going to come now. <laughs> Fred Johnson's going to come, and he's going to sing. And while Fred's singing, I want you to get up out of that do-nothing chair. Don't keep, you're going to be sitting there this time next year. Let's you get up and go forward and call. Here's Fred. Ministry bowing. A thousand dollar vow of faith for uh, the uh, finances to be broken in my life, uh, for Satan to take his hands off of my life, to return to me sevenfold, plus to begin to reap and sow a hundredfold. Today I'm able to virtually and literally buy anything that I want. I mean, God has super, super, supernaturally blessed me as a result of my faith. It was humiliating being on welfare. 
The next morning I called up and I made another $500 vow and the first one was for uh, the business to grow from the $966 a month. In the last six months, it's been over $70,000 that the company has made. We were able to go off of welfare. It's because of our vow that we're seeing the success in everything we have today. Everything God's blessed us with is from that vow, you know, because Brother Bob taught us how to make a vow, what a vow is, what vowing is you know, and what we, that we can expect from God. I had approximately $16,000 worth of credit card debt build up. We made a vow for $1,000 that the Lord would deliver us from our experience and, and provide us with, with a job. I've been promoted uh, twice. I, I now make three and a half times the salary I made at the other, before my desert experience. The vow taught me to let go of the natural and start believing in the supernatural. That's something I'd never done before. I believe if I'd never made a vow, I would still be stuck in that same rut that we were in. We've come out of uh, a financial bondage into freedom. Uh, we've come out of uh, poverty into uh, prosperity. Well, it took me out of a mere existence, a terrible existence, into abundant living, you know, joy and happiness and peace and being free from worry. It's absolutely exciting what God is doing through the vow of faith. The vow of faith. You know, years ago, I, was, I found myself praying in tongues. And I heard myself what I was saying. I said, God, is it necessary for me to buy all this TV and radio time and run these spots for people to come to church? Why can't the people bring, them, bring the people to church, get them saved? And the Lord said, I cannot always depend on them, but I can depend on you, and I have increased your seed for sowing. Oh, it thrilled my soul. And that's why I believe God has given me such a strong revelation of making a vow, seeding out of your knee, believing God for something good and something big to happen in your life, taking him as your senior partner. I believe that's why God opened my heart and this came into me like I know it more than I know my own name. What God will, what God will do if you'll just give him an opportunity. Every day we're seeing God fulfill these promises. It says in the last days, the wealth of the sinner is going to come into the hands of the righteous. God wants to raise up you as a paymaster. Yes, he wants to bless your home, bless you with a new home or car. But you learn to give and get in that rhythm of seed time and harvest. Now quickly, you just got two minutes before we go off the air and call. Make that call. You've made some calls a few places you shouldn't have called before. It's time to do something for the work of God and when you do something for God's work, you're doing something for your work. When you do something for God's business, you're doing something for your business. It breaks the lack off of you. In time of trouble, make a vow, Psalms 50, and God will deliver you. Now quickly, go to your phone and call where it's $1,000 or $500 or $100 or 250 pay on it weekly, monthly, ever how long it takes. Just watch and see what, how God begins to provide the seed. James and Barbara, David, Sonia, and what he wants to do for you. You need to make that vow. God's put it in your heart. It's in your heart. Father, right now, I pray that they will do it because I know what you want to do new. That's it, new, 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 new in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Just as I said something new in their life, I saw someone traveling, someone doing some type of a traveling, a traveling thing. What God wants to do new in someone's life there's also part of your life is your life is not exciting, but God wants to make it exciting, an adventure of faith to see what God will do. Right now, there's several of our prayer ministers are standing by on the phones to receive your call. Those of you that would like more information, just be sure and ask for that free gift package on how to live and walk in God's circle of blessings. And those of you that have testimonials, be sure and call in and share your testimony with what God is doing. There's a person, you're just sitting there. You should have gotten up. It's not too late. Even when we go off the air, we're still standing by to receive your call and make the vow of faith, and let's see what God's going to do new. That's that word, new, in your life. I love you. I've got to go.
You've been watching Success in Life with Robert Tilton. That's what we come here for, is to worship God. We don't come to put on a fashion show. This is a, a general love offering, expense offering for the Lighthouse Church budget. We do have a heavy budget, and we don't, we don't use God's money for foolishness. We just don't. And I said, Lord, it would be so nice, but I don't ask for it. I just thought about it. But somehow I believe, Sister Green, I've got his favor. A lady who hasn't seen me in 25 years wrote me a letter and said, Sister Taylor, I have promised God I'm giving Allie Taylor to a, a whole acre of commercial property right on the highway 20 miles from Tampa, right close to the sun city of St. Petersburg. I'm going to give you a chance because the Lord's been talking to me to prove God this morning again. I have some slips made out. And it says, help me prove God for these blessings. Now, these are not for everybody. These are for a special few. These are for people that are going to sacrifice maybe some bills they need to pay. Or maybe it's that dress they needed to buy. Or maybe it's that fall coat that you've been laying away a little money on. But this morning, you feel like it's time for you to prove God and make a sacrifice. Don't you come up here for this unless you've made a sacrifice. Now, everything you give to God's not a sacrifice. It's your reasonable service to give every dime you can to the Lord. But when you take something that hurts, like I've done down through the years and like many of you have done and give to God, God will give you this morning what you stand before me for, for he spoke to me to do this. While they're coming, if you have approved me offering, I want you to fill out one of these slips, and then you're going to get in the other side and line up till I get there. Don't put it in the basket over there. Don't put an offering in the basket over there till I get there. Everybody march for this great general offering this morning. Get in this line if you have approved me offering. Line up over there. Oh, yes, Jesus, the sacrifice offering is on your left this morning. Just get in line. some questions and if the answer is yes he can I want you to yell it back at me as loud as you can let's try it one time let me hear you say yes he can yes, he oh you can say it better than that say it again yes, he can. all right listen to the question now can God deliver a dope addict yes, he can. can God deliver an alcoholic yes, he can. Can God deliver a homosexual? Yes, he can. can God heal the sick? Yes, he can. can God deliver now? Yes, he can. Say it again. Say now. now. Lift up your hands and praise Him. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all. My God shall supply all. He shall supply all. All my need. All my need. When you're down on the ground, when you're up against the wall, when you're low down in the place, my God shall supply all, 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 my need. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, I feel a tingling in my bosom. Hallelujah. I feel a chill going up and down my spine because I know that there's hope. I said, I know that there is hope. Can you praise the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. There is hope. up as it is they get into it a little bit and i have to admire them for that i mean if i was going to pick a religion uh of, of you know christian type religion that i had to go into one of them i mean thank god i don't have to but if i had to go into one of them i would you know pick the pentecostal faith because some of the churches the music is just great and uh the people are interesting you know they're kind of weird uh and it's okay you know it's of, of for the church things it's it's a little farther out Glory G to Jesus. I worked for 75 cents an hour with a pick and shovel, and I preached on Sunday as a pastor to church, and I said, because I was faithful, God's now given me a Cadillac. Hallelujah. And I said, I'll tell you something else. God would have something wrong with him if he didn't, because Jesus Christ himself said that no man hath forsaken houses or lands or fathers or mothers or, or brothers or friends, uh, except that he'll get a hundredfold more in this life uh, and in the life uh, to come eternal life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. He said he'd do it, and if he didn't do it, there'd be something wrong with God's word. I said, now I'm driving a Cadillac. Why don't you do it? Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, Jesus is real. How many can say, man? Yeah. 